Welcome back everybody to another video. For anybody new, hello. My name is Meg. I am lactose intolerant. I am gluten intolerant and I eat on a low FODMAP diet for digestive reasons. Um, I'm on a phase three low FODMAP diet so I know what FODMAPs bother me so I can avoid or limit them and enjoy the ones that don't seem to like garlic, onion, things like that. My schedule today is pure chaos. Um, so I want meals that are gonna be quick, easy, and tasty. That's basically what it comes down to. So I kept that in mind when planning the menu for today. So I have myself my plain cup of coffee here. I'm going to enjoy this and let's jump into what I'm making for breakfast today. Breakfast is this at least American classic. A lot of people I knew grew up with it. Egg in the holes, bird in a basket, frogs on a lily pad, whatever you call it. That is what I am making for breakfast today. To start off with, if you have pre-sliced bread or gluten-free bread, awesome. I have this baguette that I made, this gluten-free baguette that I made the day prior. Though it is ugly, the inside texture of this bread was actually remarkably nice. I ended up cutting off a couple of big, thick slices of it. And then I found this cookie cutter and I was thinking at the time, man, this cookie cutter looks a little small but I went ahead and used it anyway to cut a hole out of each slice of the bread. Then I took some softened butter and I smeared it over each slice of bread, including the little holes, and then naturally topped it with salt and pepper. The cast iron that I had preheating, I put each of the slices of toast in, including both of the little holes, cooked them until they were a nice golden brown on one side, flipping them over so they could start browning on the other side. This is when the realization that those holes were definitely too small. When I put the egg in the hole, it spilled out all over the pan, especially worse than the second one, but I cleaned up the extra egg and I moved on, cooked the eggs on that side for a few minutes, flipped it over and cooked them until they were my preferred level of doneness, which for me is over medium. Sadly though, I was rushing and I ended up breaking both of the yolks. There is the final product. I have a small tomato chopped up on the side, seasoned with salt and pepper, of course. A little sad that I broke both of my yolks, but I was in a rush. It happens <laughs> when you're in a rush sometimes. Um, I did not grow up eating these like a lot of people did. Um, my husband actually introduced these to me when we met and I love them. Whatever you call them, egg in the holes, uh, what is it, frogs on a pad, uh, birds in a nest. I've heard several, I've heard them called several different things, um, but they're delicious. Let's dive in and see how this gluten-free bread tastes in this. I'm sure it's gonna be fabulous because it looked really good, the bread. Um, I will leave the link for the, the bread recipe down in the description. A lot of the stuff I'm making today doesn't really have a recipe since it's just kind of like combine a couple of ingredients. There's no real measurements to it. Okay, I got a little bit of yolk. There's the bite. That's pretty tasty, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna go ahead and try one of the little the little holes um, that's just like the crisped up buttered bread. I wanna try this too. The bread is still a, a little bit more dense than normal, um, like French bread, cause that's kind of what I'm comparing it to. French bread's like really light and airy, but no, it isn't bad. I mean, the texture of it is great. So yeah, I'm gonna go take my breakfast, enjoy it, and um, meet you guys back at lunchtime. Oh my gosh, it is already lunchtime. This day has been flying by. I grabbed a few things out of the pantry and the fridge to make a quick and easy little lunch that honestly I used to make all the time. I haven't made it in a while. Um, kind of excited for it, but uh, show you guys what we're gonna be having for lunch today. Lunch is rice, cake, fruit, and yogurt nachos. I love this meal. It's super simple. I'm taking what fruit I have in my fridge, which is blueberries, strawberries, and grapes in low FODMAP quantities for me, some dark chocolate chips, my natural peanut butter, 
some low sodium plain rice cakes, vanilla protein powder, and my yogurt. That's all it takes. Quickly, I chopped up the grapes and the strawberries, and I portioned out a little bit of blueberries as well. I measured out about a half a cup or so of my lactose-free fat-free yogurt, a scoop of vanilla protein powder, and I mixed that all together. But it forms this really thick, almost frosting-like consistency, so I slowly added in water. You could also add milk until I got a smoother consistency like this. I'm going to take two, three rice cakes, however hungry you are, and break them up into little wedges. And just like regular nachos that you would top with queso, I am topping it with that smooth vanilla yogurt mixture. Topped it with all of my fruit, my chocolate chips, and then finally a little bit of a drizzle of my peanut butter. That's it. In a few minutes, the nachos are done. There is the final rice cake, yogurt, fruit nachos. Honestly, I'm so excited. I haven't had this in quite a while. This is a lunch for me today, but I've had, uh, this is a snack before, as a dessert before. <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm just going to dig in. I'm very excited to have this for the first time in a while. Yummy. This is yummy. And it's so quick. I mean, the thing that takes the longest is getting the yogurt to the right consistency. And that literally took me like less than a minute. So yeah, I'm going to go eat my delicious, delicious lunch. It is now dinner time and I'm tired. I had a busy day and I don't want to spend a lot of time on dinner. So I pulled some tomato paste out of the pantry, plus some gluten-free pasta. I've got some green bell pepper and some onion, and then finally, a little bit of ground beef. I am going to be making pasta with a meat sauce tonight for dinner. Is this going to be a gourmet sauce? Delightful, you know, flavorful, been simmering all day? Absolutely not. This is gonna be a one minute pasta sauce. It's going to top my ground beef and vegetables. And we're gonna have it with some pasta and probably some of that gluten-free bread that I had earlier today. This is going to come together really quickly. I'm going to get the pasta cooking first, get the vegetables and the ground beef going, and really the only thing that I'll show you guys how to make is this one minute uh, tomato paste sauce. Like I said, tonight for dinner is gluten-free pasta with a vegetable and meat sauce and a side of toasted gluten-free bread. I started off with the prep of the vegetables and the bread, a half a cup of onion, the green bell pepper, and a zucchini that I had found in my fridge that I needed to use up. Low FODMAP friends, if you can't have the onions, skip on it, but I add that to the pan with a little bit of salt. Also, when you're cooking your pasta, do not forget to reserve about a cup of the pasta water when you're draining it out. We'll need that for the sauce later. Just like this morning, I toasted up some of the gluten-free bread, but this time I used olive oil, but don't forget to add salt and pepper. After the onions cooked for a few minutes, I threw in the zucchini and the frozen green bell pepper, and then I added salt and pepper to that as well. Once those were done cooking, I pulled them out of the pan, and in that same pan, I put in my ground beef. You could use Italian sausage, or ground pork, or ground chicken, or ground turkey, whatever ground meat you have on hand. You could use plant-based ground as well, but I spread that over it out the entire bottom of the pan so that it cooks faster and it gets a little bit more browning. And then I flip it and I chop it up. If you have one of those cool little meat, like chopper thingies, use that and not this. This is very inefficient. Now for the simple, quick, one minute tomato paste pasta sauce. The thing that takes the longest is getting all of these ingredients together. And here, here is a hack. This is like one of the few hacks I use. On your tomato paste can, completely open the top and the bottom of the can. Pull the bottom lid off, flip it up over your bowl, and then 
push down on the top. If you know this hack, you know how awesome it is for tomato paste. If you don't, you're welcome. Then I add all the rest of the ingredients, the water, the oil, the herbs, and the seasonings. And then I spend a few minutes just quickly mixing that all together. And that's it. That's how easy this sauce is to make. Since I can't use jarred or canned pasta sauce anymore, this is definitely my go-to. It was about this time that the bread was done toasting to a beautiful golden brown. Now to mix it all together, I add the veggies, the pasta, and the tomato paste sauce all to the pan. I find that mixing it with tongs is easiest for me. And as I'm stirring this all up, I'm adding a little bit of the pasta water at a time until the sauce reaches the thickness that I prefer. And I served myself up a good helping of the sauce, the pasta, with the side of that toasty bread, topped it with a little bit of a pinch of crushed red pepper, and of course, fresh parsley from my garden. And there is the final meat sauce and spaghetti with the bread all toasted up, looking delicious. Um, I've had this before, but I'll eat it again for you guys on camera, just so that you believe me, it's delicious. There's the bite. Yep, that's, it's tasty for how like one minute pasta sauce and then it's just like waiting for everything else to cook and that's it. And then some of my toast here, the little bit of the pasta sauce on it. <laughs> that is a classic dinner, at least for me growing up. This was something very similar to this, was something we had all the time. And uh, yeah, it's tasty and I'm happy to have it for dinner tonight. But that will be it for me for today. Thank you everybody for watching today. I hope you found some inspiration in the foods that I made. Um, always double check the ingredients in every recipe to make sure it will work for you because what works for me might not work for you. Uh, if you enjoyed the recipes, don't forget to like it and don't forget to subscribe if you wanna watch more content like this and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.